with the way that me brawler works theoretically i think intercepting him off stage with dark pit's arrows nets you so much more reward but in practice because you're netting him more consistently with pit you're able to just peck away at his stock slowly but surely and that kind of early on consistency is what ryan needs I've seen Ryan win game 10 finals as well in the past like three or four days. <sighs> this is starting to become so commonplace in their sets too. You'll see at the beginning, each player almost feels as though they're wondering, what are you thinking this game? What game plan are you trying to execute right now? Almost, almost. Really good DI from Ryan, pretty consistently. There's only been one time where I've seen him die to it and even like thought like maybe like perfect DI could have saved him. <sighs> Ooh, that's always such a weird effect in this game. That can just like weirdly spike you off the stage like that. I, I didn't want to say stage spike, but you know, grounded spike is the term. Ryan's doing a pretty good job of staying alive, but he's not necessarily getting that much done in terms of, you know, making his prospects any better. He's kind of just delaying the inevitable in a sense. Good catch there, though. Yeah, yeah. Chain up these 10 out of 10 times. 11 out of 10 times. Shane will do it, and that scenario won't even be presented to him. But if that scenario is presented to him, he will do it. Good coverage on that down smash. It doesn't cover every option, but it covers a lot of the most likely options, in my opinion. Good coverage there, too. I think that was... I believe that was a footstool. I believe that's why Brawler died. Uh, I didn't see for sure. But if so... Ryan was positioning himself so that he got the footstool, killing Brawler, or he missed the footstool and got the Nair. Just like that, we're almost even again. This game one could mean a lot, honestly. If Ryan can take this, it proves that Shane hasn't adapted fully to him. It proves that Ryan still has gas left in the tank. It proves that this set is still well within his reach. If Shane takes it, I mean, that's, that's, that's gonna be really hard both as a mental and just general game barrier. Going down four, four games in a row to somebody is a huge mental blow. Especially someone like Shane, who again, is so rock solid in all of these scenarios. I do think Ryan is playing... Yeah, I think he could have honestly just gone for an F smash there. That move is really laggy. It's really bad. Oh. I think again, he... I think he was planning around the down B there specifically. I think he was thinking Shane would down B. Because it looked like he was positioning himself a little too far for a roll read, and then Shane did roll and he got no reaction. Really good catch. <sighs> this is a real nail biter. Nerves of steel. Nerves of steel to keep competing in this. Liking the stall from Ryan, just to like make sure that he's at a position where Brawler can't really be threatening with Dare anymore. Kind of like force Shane to waste his time off stage so that he's not in position anymore. Oh, I really like the attempt. That was really, really close to being like a huge checkmate position for Ryan. Just barely missed. Another thing that Ryan has been doing very well today, I think, is prioritizing center stage. I think, like, a common thing that has plagued Ryan is that his advantage stage is fantastic, but he can lose neutral really often because he can give up opportunities and he can seed center stage. But you'll see a lot of these opportunities. Instead of getting too hesitant and to trying to push advantage when he doesn't have advantage, Ryan is going back, taking center stage, and dominantly forcing everyone to play his game his way in a lot of ways. be it not quite good di good di from shane he does have the the you know knowledge i assume of how to survive rob up there oh. yeah that's a really frustrating way to lose it too
This is gonna be real nerves of steel stuff. Try to pull this off. Getting reversaled and trying to counter reversal is uh, a real hell of a task. I think like if Ryan just cleans up a few issues, he'll have so much of an easier time. There's like just a few key things that are happening that are preventing him. That was a really, really good edge guard. First 20 seconds already, Ryan dominantly puts himself in a kingmaker position. Already lapping Shane in percent, dude. When you're lapping someone in percents, not even 30 seconds into the game, that's a really good feeling. It's also terrifying in a way though. Honestly, when I'm on, when I'm in that scenario, I almost prefer, I would almost prefer to be the person on the receiving end of it because then it's like, well, if I lose this game, then it is what it is. Uh, I, I just kind of lost it in the first 30 seconds, but I could also just really pull off a lot of adaptations in it too. Yeah, no, Ryan's looking at. I think that was probably an accident from Shane. He probably wanted the command grab, but not off stage. I, I, I don't. There's no way Shane intentionally wanted to go off stage with it. Is he still right? Wow. <laughs> yeah, Ryan wanted it. I understand. I would have done the same thing there, even though I'm pretty sure it's not hit. Ryan's got two stocks to work with and uh, almost six minutes. This might be one of the quickest games uh, we would see at this level, you know? You'll see a lot of these games. I think earlier um, in past Grand Set, in the uh, original Grand Set, you know, we saw some of the games go with less than two minutes remaining. Uh, this is a fast-paced set. I think it's working out in Ryan's favor because what he's doing is overwhelming Shane so much. Shane does definitely really kind of thrive on having scenarios which he gets to download your play over time, especially as Brawler. And in this scenario, he can't download Ryan's habits because he's too busy trying to fix his own to get out of the terrible positions. That should be an easy, wow. That was a dominant reversal. That is like a kick of adrenaline to the system. That is how Ryan needs to play to win Wii Tech Close. Like, this would genuinely be so huge for Ryan to not only be balancing, like, his toughest school semester, but also being president of the club and getting his first Wii Tech Close win is, like, that's the kind of play that's like, wow, okay, yeah, yeah, he can do this. But can he do it consistently? <laughs> Yeah, that game was insanely fast-paced, and again, I think it was entirely in Ryan's favor, and I think it was, I think it, Ryan knows, like, what he did right in that game. You know, we're seeing a slower start to this game, but I think once Ryan gets that opening, he's gonna know exactly how to push his advantage now. Look at that, too. Knowing that Shane is gonna overextend a little bit, try to get out of advantage early, just extend it even further. No, it's just, a, a, a Wii Tech those would never be done before 8 a.m. in the morning. That'll be a lot of percent that should... Oh, wow. I'm actually shocked that the uh, Orbital Gates A came out in time and B didn't get clipped. They have such a weird little blind spot on the bottom that makes like them kind of bad for juggling in a lot of scenarios. Or kind of bad, rather, for getting out of juggling. I love that neutral get up into spot dodge to cover the jab. Chen goes for that a lot. Early stock to Ryan. Again, not as early as the last game, but... Basically one minute in, Ryan's established a lead. Now he is in a much worse position in terms of like, he could lose his stock to any kind of, you know, up smash, off stage shenanigans, that kind of thing, a B for sure. But he is in the winning position again. And he's got it early on. So Shane doesn't have time to be adapting to his habits. Yeah, Ryan's even getting those frame traps really good. There's a couple players here who have started doing a lot more frame trap stuff. Um, Moonlight's been getting a lot of frame traps, especially in front of these two. Dude, that almost that almost <laughs> was another really early accidental death from Shane, but he had the right spacing that time. Wow. Ryan really extended that too. He could have died the second that Shane 
came back from off the Angel platform, he was definitely already at death percent. Instead, he was able to live for long enough to get Shane to where Shane could just die to anything again. Shane seemed a lot less rusty when I played him earlier. Like, rustier than, or a lot less rusty than he's playing now, or a lot less rusty than he has been playing. Because I would agree with the latter. <sighs> yeah. Ryan's got two full stocks to work with. Brawler can obliterate those stocks, and Shane knows exactly how to do it. So Ryan's got to play smart, but he's in the winning position. Yes, I would I would fully agree. He's playing a lot less rusty today. Even, even in the uh, set that he lost against Ethan, that's kind of an understandable one. And especially in his loser's run. I was watching him against Raph. I was watching him against uh, J-Dash. He was playing really solid. But I expected it from Shane. I don't expect Shane to fall off, you know? Shane will have rough weeks. He'll have spans of a couple rough weeks, and then he'll just come back. Shane's, that's, that's, that's kind of the Shane experience. Wow! That was really hard call out. I think that was a down B call out, maybe, but it worked really well in that scenario, too. Not gonna kill yet. Ryan very, very on point with the DI, even this deep into the set. Into the set. Might take it already. No, not quite the really strong hit of that, but. <sighs> Shivers down my spine, dude. Like, I know people will probably look at this as like a Mickey Mouse bracket. I'm just gonna be honest, this is a way better Grands than it was uh, the first week. When it was me and Power Up, neither of us were playing as good as either of these players are. This is a really high level Grands. I didn't, um,. I didn't end up watching last week's Grands in full, so I can't comment on that one, but I, I definitely think, like, Shane is playing a lot better than Power Up was playing that first week, and Richard was playing miles ahead of the, of what I was doing in that Grands. Like, this is a really high-level Grand set. Yeah, this has been one of my favorite sets in VT history, genuinely, I think. Sets, but, you know, multiple sets. I mean, you know how it goes. I think everybody de-rusted. I think everybody kind of needed a couple weeks to de-rust, honestly. Ryan and Shane kind of underperformed that first weekly. Um, you know, there were players who were, like, capitalizing off of the rust, but even then, like, I'm definitely still playing a little rusty. Although I played pretty well today, honestly. I'm, I'm very happy with it. But, um, you know, I think Asdas was playing a little rusty that first week, and then... Uh, <laughs> hey, I interact. I interact all the time. I interact with my lovely, lovely, lovely blaster. Like the idea on that F smash callout, just uh, not the right spacing, not the right spacing. I'm bum rushing Ryan if he wants, by the way. Yeah. That'll kill, that'll kill. I told Shane before this, I don't remember if I've mentioned this on here. I told Shane before this, it's okay if Ryan wins, but make him fucking earn that win. Ryan wins, he's earned it. That's no excuse, Asdas. I won like $500 without, from Smash, without having any Wi-Fi connection in my house, just training against spirit battles. It's honestly the best way to get better, honestly. If you're playing against other people, you're doing it wrong. Early, early combo. Early percents. 30% percent off of one stray hit, nothing to scoff at. I, I do think Pit has a lot of like flaws, but you cannot talk about his combo game as one of his flaws, dude. He can get a lot off of almost anything at most percents, too. I'm loving Ryan's patience here. He's playing really patient. He's not going to let himself get cheesed by any of uh, Shane's option off of ledge again. Early kill. Again, Shane's gonna make him earn it. This goes into a d game 10 grands. That would be insane. At current rate, obviously, that's kind of what it's looking like. Also, I just realized, did did Shane take Ryan here? It must have been, right? Shane must have taken Ryan here. That's a really interesting choice by Shane. It's obviously working out for him, and honestly, I think even if I, it wasn't working out for him, it would have been a smart choice, because he was doing so well against Shane, and this was Ryan's counter pick as well. That'll take it. This is still a winnable game for Ryan. He's 
got to get those early percents. He's got to mount that comeback, or he's got to he's got to gimp. Doable? Yes. Is Shane gonna give it to him? Probably not. Huge, huge moment. I think Shane got a little greedy there, but it was okay because the shot put covered him. Might have even been an intentional bait trying to use the shot put to uh, get Ryan to get him over there. That won't kill yet. The DI from Ryan. Interesting choice there by Shane that I like a lot is going for the single dare, missing it, and then backing off and picking another option to edge guard instead. Ice and ice and Shane's veins, dude. All right. Game 10, game 10. We're taking it back to PS2. Bring it back to where it all began. I think I like Ryan's idea there for the up smash because what happened there was exactly the same as one of the games that Ryan lost last second, where he got popped up a little bit by the up B from ledge, jumped into the air, and then died to the up B further up on the stage. And I think Ryan was expecting Shane to kind of go down that same tree, but Shane instead smartly waited, Ryan overextended, Shane took it, and now we are in. <sighs> this is one of those where if it's at like a big tournament, like this is like Grand's at like a big major or something, I honestly would turn Twitch off because I'm like so stressed for the players that I would rather watch it knowing who. I get so much second, I get more secondhand anxiety than I do anxiety actually. Strong start for Ryan. Chain can make it back very easily. Good escape from Ryan there. Not getting tilted, not getting impatient. Yeah, I've smashed punish for sure. I would have definitely called out Ryan if he did anything but. Just a little slow on the punish there, and that'll do it, yeah. Hard to hard to catch a lot of the B Brawler falling stuff because he's such a fast faller. We've definitely seen Shane make these positions back before, but I feel like when Ryan has established this dominant of an early lead, it's been really rough for Shane. The one exception I can think of is definitely the time when Ryan had the lead, he kept it for a while, but he wasn't really amassing that much percent, and he has already amassed about as much percent in like one interaction, one and a half interaction basically, as he did that whole entire like two minute stretch. Wow, that's a really good get up attack. That's really smart. I don't remember him going for get up attack much at all against Shane, which is crazy too, because that's one of Ryan's worst habits. Yeah, I don't even know if he could have teched off the stage if he hit it. That might have been unteckable. It'd be so funny if Shane just fell off the stage again. And Like, this is like the tensest, hypest set ever, and then Shane just fell off side B, and that's how the set ends. It'd be really funny, I think. That's all I wanted. I wanted I wanted whoever wins to have to earn it. Shane innately would have to earn it, but I, I wanted Ryan to have to earn it. I didn't want Shane to just be like, well, I got second. I'm happy. And I don't, I don't think Shane's that kind of player, but... <sighs> Shane's evening this back up. Grab on the platforms. Anything like that. Really good recognition there. <sighs> yeah, he was just a little slow. I think maybe going for a bear or something there. Raw bear is the play. Shane overshot it a little. It's okay. Didn't get punished for it. I love the idea to go for grab instead of dash attack there. Even if dash attack nominally gets you more reward, grab is such a good idea. He's just slightly overshooting these reads that would get him stocks, and it's, uh... That's definitely going to be really... Oh, he might be fishing a little bit. That'll take it. That'll take it. Okay, okay. This is it. Tournament game. Tournament stock. What's he going to do? What are both these players going to do? Shane's going to go off stage and grab Ryan midair with side B and just lose for no reason. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. Ryan's honestly, he's playing, he has a couple nervous habits. He's playing really fucking well with how nervous I know he needs to be. Shane too, but I think, I think Shane genuinely, like, just kind of, even if Shane is nervous, he never lets it show in his personality or in his play. And that's why beating him in this scenario is probably the best, most poetic way for Ryan to win. Other than like, I don't know, fucking beating Ryan or something. I don't know. That's not that poetic. That's just like cool. <sighs> Ryan is playing really well. Do not overextend, not die, grab center stage, but that'll be it. <sighs> I'm closing my eyes. <laughs> I almost can't watch, but I, I would hear the result. I would hear the result in multiple ways. I'm, I'm definitely his biggest bracket demon. He loses to Shane and beats Shane. So Ryan beating me is already huge. I mean, obviously, like, Lannan is kind of everyone here's Bracket Demon. I think he's beaten Power Up a couple times, so probably not Power Up. Let's fucking go!